So there's Eddie, and that's Bean. They knew there were 11 babies here that were born from their chimps because they didn't do proper birth control. And they still left. Your blessings are left on the 5th of March, 2015. Everything come to a close, and there was some fruit that was left behind. So I came out, I fed it on the 5th, and I fed it on the 6th, and everything was gone. No more food. I know I've been not been for the help of the Humane Society, I tell you. But now all the things have been dead. I mean, it would have been horrible. I mean, you know, they would have died. They would have starved to death. I mean, imagine yourself. You're stuck on a deserted island and you can't get food. You'd be desperate. It'd be an awful, awful way to go. And these guys, they don't even, you know, the chimps don't even know. They don't know why. They've been used to Joseph and the other guys coming out every, every other day to give them food. And so all of a sudden they'd be like, waiting and, you know. Anyway. You know, you see Bullet and Samantha. And usually when I go out, I don't think about it. But the other day I was just looking at, looking at those guys and I'm thinking, man, thinking about what would have happened, you know? They would have just died. What New York Blood Center did is cruel, you know, and uh, there's just no need for it. We pack all our stuff on the truck and then we leave for the island. On the sixth island, we have 63 chimps. We have a feed every day. So these first two islands have a lot of the older chimps. Hi, Bullet. <laughs> these chimps who are we're seeing every day today like Samantha, like Bullet, like David, um, like Mabel, some of the really older chimps. You just think, I can't believe they're here to begin with after going through all of the research. And they are still here surviving. I mean, they're the ultimate survivors. They're miracles, really, to me. Being able to have the comparison of when we first went out, because it was almost as though all the chimps were the same in the sense that they were all desperate. They all ran up to the boat. They all were screaming. They all had fear faces. Now I see them, and I see their different personalities. That's how Malak always eats. She always lies on her side and eats like that. She likes to relax. We see chimps displaying. We see chimps grooming each other and they can trust in humans, finally trust in humans, that they are going to come and do something good and nice and kind and loving to them. <laughs> That's a really yummy food grunt. New York Blood Center created the situation. They took them out of the wild, they started a breeding colony, and they created the situation that these chimps are in. The least they can do is support them. They deserve it, you know, they deserve to be cared for. If New York Blood Center can hear me, they should be sincere, generous, to see what they can do to give some money to the Humane Society to support these chimps. I think it would be better. I do say Near Blood Center still has an opportunity. You know, any day they want to talk to us about doing right by the chimps, I will sit down and talk with them, absolutely. They have the opportunity. I really hope they take it.